everybody, it's Lynn. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing a book talk on Dreams of God and Monsters by Lainey Taylor, the final book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. Yay, I'm so happy that I finished this trilogy. And I'm actually quite proud of myself just because a lot of people said this trilogy is really hard to get through. And it's probably one of the most intense world building I've ever gone through with a series or a trilogy or whatever you want to call it so I'm really proud of myself that I got through it and it's just yeah so um, I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book um, uh, it's, it's so hard I, I think this is what I like to call the city of heavenly fire syndrome I haven't came up with a proper name for it yet but I like to call it so far the city of heavenly fire um, syndrome, which is when you go into a final book in a series or trilogy or whatever, um, and you have super high expectations for it, and you know, you want it to be like the epic conclusion, that's like the best, right? You want that. We all want that. And then you go in with like extremely high expectations. Like expectations that are so high, they go through the roof. Like that's what happens, right? And then, you know, you read it and those expectations are so high that it's not possible unless you're like an extremely skilled writer to reach those expectations. And then you're like, oh my God, this book, I, I, I don't like it. And when if you do that, like me, I did that with City of Heavenly Fire, and I thought that that was, like, my least favorite book in the series, like, worse than City of Bones. Like, that's what I put it down. And then, like, a couple days later, it took me, like, three, four days later, I finally, like, started to love it, and then it went to my second favorite in the series. Now, this book is exactly the same thing, and I finished it last night, and it's taking me even less time than City of Heavenly Fire to acknowledge how amazing it is. Now, the way it went with Dollar Smoke and Bone was amazing. It was like the best thing ever. And then Days of Blood started like, I was like, oh my god, I only, I can't even get through this. It was good until like, it was like bad until, like not bad, but it was kind of slow paced and boring until the really end. Like, as I said, that much in. Um, and it got really good, right? And then this book was like an awesome conclusion when you actually think about it overall and that's why guys don't go into books of high expectations take it from me I tell myself not to do it all the time but I do it anyways so take it from me don't do it guys it's ruining it, it'll ruin your whole experience for for a book but overall I did really like this book um, there were a lot of things that I wanted to happen that did happen in this book and a lot of things I didn't know were, I would like if they happened and I did end up liking them or disliking them and this book was just overall amazing I would rate it um, uh, four out of five stars and I think it's my favorite in the series no, I think Dollar Spoken Bone has to stay the favorite. I don't know. I think it does. But this is my second favorite. Or, you know what? This is tied with Dollar Smoking Bone. So, yeah. Um, but that's the non spoilerly part of this video. So, if you haven't read the Dollar Smoke and Bone tr um, first two books, I have a non spoilerly part so that describes the synopsis on the first book, which I'll link down below. And I also have a book talk on the second book, Day of Blood and Starlight, and I'll link that down below. So, if you have not read... All the Dollar and Spoken Bone books, so all three, you can leave now. Bye, non spoiler people. Bye, 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 bye. So, oh my god, I'm so proud of myself that I finished this book. And I know I'm probably overreacting because of Lynn. It's just one book. I bet you've read books longer than that. And I have. It's not the fact that the page is, it's just that I'm so happy. And this book makes me so happy. We finally get Karu and Akiba. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I've been waiting this moment for so long. The whole book, two, book two, Karu annoyed me so much. I was like, no, I don't like Akiva. Akiva killed my family, I hate him. No, you don't hate him. You love him. You're, you're just, mm. So there, I, yeah, there were a lot of couples building in this story, and I'll get to that more at the end because I want to have a long talk about Karu and Akiva, but that'll wait until the end. So let's start, how did our story start off? Oh yeah, with Eliza. So like until like more than half of the book when we find out what she really is, I'm like, what the heck, why are we following this random ordinary girl? Like why? I don't, I honestly do not care about her. It was like the whole magical thing. I didn't care about magical until I found out she was actually Karu. 
And then, did you guys know Eliza was going to be an angel? Like, a descendant from an angel? That whole story was pretty good. I was like, whoa, 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 descendant of angel, whoa. And then you get why she chose her name Eliza, because what her birth name was Elazel. I hope I pronounced that right, Elazel, which was the angel that she descended from. And the things her people did to her, the angel cults or whatever back home where she lived before, ew, dude, that, that's so nasty, okay? I understand why she ran away. I would have ran away too. Like, they would take her toenails and crush them and like make them the powder and they would take her teeth and oh my god, and her hair and her skin, it was so nasty. Like, why? I don't understand. I'm happy she ran away because she does not deserve to be here. That's so nasty. Like, those angel cults have serious problems. I'm not even kidding. So I did end up really liking um, Eliza. I was like, what the heck is she doing in this book? I really do not care about her. But then we found out what she really was. I was like, oh, yeah, this is pretty awesome. I did not see that coming. Like how I didn't see the magical thing coming. So it may have been obvious that she was an angel. And I just really do not think things grew while I'm reading. So maybe that's the case. And that it was pretty obvious that she was an angel. Now, in this book, I also really loved Liraz. Liraz has turned into probably one of my favorite characters in this whole series. We get to see... Um, more inside emotion in Liraz. We got to see that in the second book, but in this book we get to see more and like more of her fear and more of her love. She starts growing a love for Ziri, which I thought was so. I didn't think that was gonna happen. I thought Ziri was gonna end up with like Sarazel's sister. What's her name? Stavelta? Whatever her, whatever her name is. That girl in the second book who um, got who was a freed Chimera slave. Remember that? Yeah, I thought he was gonna end up with her, but no, he ended up with Liraz, which I think is cool. Liraz deserves a happy ending. She may be uh, a tight, a, a tight, like a person with a stick in her butt sometimes, but she deserves a happy ending, guys. I, I love Liraz so much. She's like, she's so if you if you are on her good side she's so loyal to you like i want a friend like liraz i want liraz in real life sometimes liraz yeah it can be a bit like annoying and like oh i don't have emotions i don't care about anything in life but killing and that's how she really seemed in the first book but i love liraz so much and i'm so happy she got a happy ending and oh my god oh and she started blushing and like oh my god that was so cute the whole liraz and ziri oh my god and Ziri, I hated Ziri. I was like, Ziri, yo, get away from Karu, okay? You know, it's never gonna happen, Ziri. Go, just leave, Ziri, leave, Ziri, leave, Ziri. And then, you know, that's like that, because I don't want anything bad to become between Karu and Akiba. So I'm like, Ziri, go. And he's like that guy who you want to feel bad for, but you can't because he's getting in between your ship, and you know, you don't want that to happen, right? So I was like, Ziri, leave, Ziri, leave. Ziri, just leave. I, I really do not care about you right now. Just leave, Ziri. And then I was like, but then, you know, he died as the wolf, and you saw Liraz, and Liraz was like, oh my god, this part was so sad. I didn't cry or anything, but it was so sad. I, I like, oh my god, and she was like, oh, I trapped his soul in this canteen, and I, I sang, I sang, if that helped, and I was like, oh, 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 Liraz, 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 oh my god. And then Liraz started crying. At the end of that chapter, I was like, whoa, whoa, this is amazing. I, was, I, I doggy eared that page, and I don't care if I doggy eared because it was worth it. Like, there were so many chapters in this book that I doggy eared so I can, like, go back and read those chapters because those chapters were so intense with emotions. I was like, oh, oh, I need to read those again. So I doggy eared them so I could save them, and no, I don't care that I doggy eared them. So, no, who cares? I, don't, I honestly do not care, okay? Sorry. Sorry, not sorry, okay? So that was so cute, and oh my god, Liraz, mm, Liraz, Liraz, Ziri, and I'm happy Ziri got back to, um, came back alive, he got resurrected in his mostly natural form, his Kieran form, happy for that, and like, Liraz and Ziri, Liri, Liri, it's so bad, ship names are so bad in this trilogy, like, you can't make a ship name, Liri, yeah, and then, um, uh, what's her name? Zuzana and Mike finally got engaged. Yes! I'm happy for them. Not as happy as I am for Ziri and Liraz, but I'm happy for them. Because you obviously kind of knew it was coming ever since that whole thing in um, 
she was like, oh, she was hoping that he was going to ask her to marry him. I think that was in the second book, yeah. And she started doing that thing where he, he was like, Susanna, will you? And she thought I was going to marry me, but it was make me a sandwich. And um, so we kind of knew that was coming. And when he bought that silver ring, like, what else could that ring be for? So but I'm happy for them. I'm happy. Susanna and Mike are still amazing and happy. They were tough and stuck through this book beside Karu, their best friend. That was really sweet. Now let's get on to jail. What the whole problem in this book was was stupid jail. Jail, jail, mm, jail, jail. He wants to go to Earth and wants the humans to worship him as a god so they can give him weapons. Because stupid Razgoot told him about this stuff and jail's like, oh yeah, they're gonna worship me as a god. I can I can do this. I'm gonna get those weapons and use them against the chimera. Yeah, yeah. You know what, jail? We all knew that was gonna happen because you're going down. That I already knew he was going down. Come on. Razgoot, I hate Razgoot. And mm, we found out why Razgoot um got was fallen because he did the whole portal thing that was kind of confusing for me like I didn't get that I didn't grasp that properly if any of you like know exactly like can explain it to me again can you comment down below because like I don't think I grasp grasp that properly that part of the book I was like uh okay I kind of get that but I kind of don't so if I get that wrong in this book talk just correct me down below I want to know exactly what happened but basically he did that thing with the portal and then he fell and he became this dirty little thing he is now and now he's working for jail and now he's being not my favorite character at all so jail's like oh yeah mm -hmm, i can get these weapons it's so easy but really like he wears that mask as the scar i don't, I don't know jail jail does it your attitude you have to be nice and godly and you're not nice and godly i'm just saying i would not believe you good the way you act I, i'm just yeah, and then when we got the idea that Karu had just to go to um, jail and ask him to leave, I was like, is that going to work? You're just going to ask him to leave? I don't know if that's going to work. Guys, uh, that idea may just be a total failure. But they went up to him, they are like, leave. There was a bit of complication, there was some knife to throat involved, but it was... It was better than a war happening about him leaving. So it was like leaving, right? He's like, oh, okay, I'll leave. Bye-bye. And that's basically the last we hear of jail. Almost. Until we get back to his palace or whatever. And then Liraz is there. And then, like, she pretends to be the woman he's going to have. And she, like, there. And then Akiva's there. And that whole thing happens. Yeah. But at least he didn't get the weapons, you know? That would have been bad if he got those weapons. Yeah. That would have been bad, you know. You don't, you don't want him to have those weapons, do you? No, I don't even know why you'd believe him. He's not even. I'm not gonna get him that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's good. And then, okay, this is a bit back. I kind of skipped this, but you know that battle they had when um, Karu, Zuzana, Verko, and Akiva and Mike went um, back when went to the human world and left everyone else battling, right? And then they came back and they were like, oh. um we don't know how we won, right? We just, like, we were losing, and then all of a sudden our enemy fell, right? So I was like, what the heck's happening? Like, I don't, I don't even know. Maybe you guys just beat them and you have short-term memory loss like me. Maybe that's the case. But um, it was a uh, stellions. I believe that's how you say it. And I kind of spoiled myself because um, this is how bad it was. I wanted to know if Karu and Akiba were together at the end. So I went to the last page and like read the last um, three, four pages and then I was like, oh yay, they're together. And then I went back and read the last chapter because that was the epilogue, right? And I went to the last chapter and I'm like, oh my god, I just spoiled myself. So we find out, but it's okay. I kind of, when I read the spoiler that I spoiled myself for, I kind of forget that I spoiled myself. Does that make sense? I kind of forget that, and now I'm like, oh yeah, I spoiled myself for that. Oh well, you know, whatever. But, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So, the Stellians helped them. What's her name? Scarab? She helped them 
win the battle and then she took Akiba and I'm like no way you're not taking Akiba you're not taking Akiba and like oh Akiba he was like I'm not going with you and then he just changes his mind it's like sure I'll go with you like I don't, I would still not go with them I just like be, leave me alone leave me alone let me be with Karu leave me alone but you know he gave in and just at that moment Karu was there and she's like Akiba what are you doing and he's like how do you think we won that battle I'll have to go with them and she's like no and then it's like yeah I have to go with them and then Eliza and Skyrim tell them that there's no god stars and that's like a huge deal for them what if someone just came up to it might not be a huge deal as it seems in the book but what if someone just came up to you and said uh, your religion is fake, right? Like, that's a big thing for them. And then then they get told from, like, a, a vision from Eliza that they're going to be the next god star. They're going to be the god stars. Like, they will be the god stars, um, them. And then they're like, oh, okay, right? So we get that, and I'm like, oh, all right. So we don't know if that's actually true. I, I don't understand if that's really what's going to happen because in the epilogue they did mention that, but I don't understand how that's exactly going to happen. They question, like, at the end, Karu said, we don't know if we'll be immortal or not, or whatever. Um, but I don't understand if they're, how that's going to work out, like, how people are going to know that. So, I don't know. I, I don't know how that whole God Star thing's going to work out. But that's pretty cool, I guess, right? But it kind of would still put you down because, like, you just found out everything you believed in before, put your hope in. Um, was fake so that kind of sucked for them but when they took Akiva away I was like no no this isn't happening and then we get to the epilogue and I'm like I already know what's happening in the epilogue because I read it when I was what like 200 pages in and then you know you get like oh they get back together and it's just so cute with the house and he was like I want a house for us in the beginning of the book right and I was like oh the house that's so cute but I don't understand. Are they never gonna live together forever? Like, are Karu, cause Akiva, cause, sorry, so much stuttering. Okay, Liraz, I believe it was Liraz who said, um, we'll be staying for a couple of weeks, but Karu will be staying until spring, and it's winter time right now, so that's like five months, okay? So, four or five months. And then, so we get to like Karu and Akiva and she leaves with Akiva and they have their sweet moment at the end and I don't understand if she's just staying for until spring is Akiva never gonna leave the stallions like is he never gonna leave them like is he still or unless he's done training because it's I don't understand if I just want him to to leave them and oh I just want them to get married guys I want them to get married so badly oh really I really did want them to get married I really did it sucks I I really did but you know they did I would like a fourth book or an epilogue epilogue like an epilogue after that epilogue like 10 years later they're a bit older and they have a kid like that's all I want in life guys that's all that's all I want that's literally all I want right now okay just please or another book another book and one more book that would be better like make it like an, a thousand page book so we can fit a lot in there and we don't have to make like three more books right would that be good yeah it's like a yeah, I want that. Oh my god, guys, I want that so badly. I just want to know what happens to them. I just want to know. I just, I just, I just want them to be happy. And I know it was technically a happy ending for everyone, right? You know, Zuzana and Mike, and then we got Liraz and Ziri, and then we got Karu and Akiba. Oh, I just want it so badly. <sighs> At least they're all happy, right? They're all happy, technically. They're all happy. They're all happy. Okay, I'm happy if they're happy. I just want them to be happier because that'll make me happier. Do, do you know what I'm saying? You understand, right? You, you understand. Okay, there's just one more thing I want to touch upon before we wrap this up. Morgan Toth. That jerk. Oh my god. What is wrong with him? What is wrong with him? He's like the Cads in the lives of life, right? Except Cads wasn't as jerky. He just wanted to, um, he just wanted to get with Karu. So... Morgan Toff is like a legit jerk, right? So I don't even know what's wrong with him. Why would he go through her phone? Like, why do you want to destroy someone's life that much? He should have died. I'm not even kidding. He should have died. 
the uh, Eliza should have went to him and like punched him in the face and like ac accidentally killed him. Like I'm not kidding. He should have died. He should have died. And what one one of my theories that I had in my other book talk was that I wanted Kaz to come back and work with the angels somehow because he believed in them or whatever. But we never really heard about Kaz. I kind of want to hear about him and like Kavu, Kavu, Karu punch him or whatever and be like, stay away. I'm with Akiva now. Go, go, go. I wanted that, but you know, Kaz never came back. So that kind of sucks. I wanted not that I wanted him. He was, he was a, he was bad, I didn't like him. He's like on the same, no, no one can top Morgan Toth. I only think, Morgan Toth was so jerky. Why would you even want to be friends with him? Why would you even hit, if I was his mother, I'd abandon him. <laughs> I, like, I don't even know how does he treat his family if he treats bar someone he barely knows, Eliza, like that. Like, I don't even know what's wrong with him. I don't, and Gabriel, that's the roommate, right? Gabriel, Eliza's old roommate, he was like, I'm gonna get you. You're gonna pay, but we never saw how he paid. So hopefully he like died in prison or something. I don't, I don't know. Hopefully he did. Cause he that he deserves that. He does. Nobody nobody deserves what Eliza got. Nobody does. I feel so bad for her. I pity Eliza so much. I pity her so much. So yeah. So overall, I really like this book. At first, I didn't really like it because I said my expectations were super super high, and that's not good for you to have for a fi especially for a final book and I think I had my expectations super high for Day of Blood and Starlight I wanted to get me like back in but that one I don't I think it was different than this one because this is a final book and you know you got your expectations really high you want that epic conclusion but you know you don't get that so it was an epic conclusion though like it was it was it was an epic conclusion it was a nice long epic conclusion um Am I satisfied with this? Yes, I am satisfied with it. Um, I'm happy that my character has got a happy ending. I'm happy that the problem was solved, that the jail didn't get those those weapons, and you know, I'm happy that the chimera and the and the angels are finally living, um, like don't hate each other anymore. I'm so happy that happened. Like that was getting annoying. Come on, stop fighting each other. Like I don't even mm, stop fighting each other. Seriously, stop fighting each other. I was like that in the first two books. I was like, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. But now they're okay with each other and they don't really care and some are together. And it was just so, I'm happy. I'm happy for their world. I'm happy for Eretz. I'm happy. I'm happy for the Chimera. I'm happy for the Angels. I'm happy for them. So I rate it four stars, and I think it's tied with Dollar Smoke and Bone, as I said. Um, I think they're both tied. I love them both in different ways. I think they kind of equal up because um, parts. The only parts I really didn't like in Dollar Smoke and Bone was the uh, magical parts, and one of the main points I didn't like in Dreams of God and Monsters was the Eliza parts before she became the angel. So I think those kind of make up for each other, and that's why they're both tied. And this book was just amazing. I'm so happy I finished the series. This series is probably reread for me, actually. I can't wait to, I will sometime in the future reread these. I, I definitely think I will. And I would, I recommend these to people who like high fantasy. Because if you really don't read, you will not get into this series. I hope you guys enjoyed this book talk, and I will have more book talks soon. I'm sorry I haven't been um, uploading the book talks as frequently. It's just because this book took me, like, so long to read because I was almost in a reading slump. I was like, no reading slump, no. But I will have more book talks, book talks up soon. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!